is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in, oh, I'm sorry, we need to do a roll call. Kate? Cheryl Hancock? Yes. Anita Shagosinski? Yes. Kate Mayer? I'm here. Tim Menninger? Yes. Lisa Collins? Yes. Gary Dunlap? Yes. Tom Cruise? Yes. Alex Zachary? Okay, here. great. Motion passes. So I would ask that you all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Jesus. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, God under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> I was talking to someone from the south when I said, y'all rise. <laughs> yeah, where did that come from? <laughs> In our board folders are our board norms. Um, I would just ask that you take a quick look at those as we proceed on to our meeting. Public participation. Is there anyone who wishes to address the board relative to any item at this time? We ask that a five minute time limit per person be followed. Please come mm -hmm. forward, state your name, address, and topic to be addressed. Okay, I'm not seeing anyone come forward. Then we'll move on to district administrator's report. In addition to the written report that you have, I was just gonna make um, a brief comment. Uh, in response to the board discussion at the last board meeting regarding the police liaison position, I just wanted to bring attention again to the board that the board did review and approve the administrative rule 882.1. Um, that really speaks to the position, the philosophical foundation of the board and the support and, and belief in the position last January. And so, but I'd be happy to take additional questions you may have. I just wanted to bring that uh, to the board's attention and, um, and remind the board that the contract is on the consent agenda tonight for approval. Other than that, that's it. Hey, any questions? Okay, seeing none, then we will move on to reports and discussion. Uh, Mr. Daly, for the dust collector filtration replacement bid results. And you also had the toolcast purchase Correct. bid. So. Good evening. Hi. All right, yes, I do have two bids for you tonight uh, that we, we received. Um, the first one is, uh, uh, is, is for a dust collector filtration system. This is located in the back of the high school, the picture you see up there, and you see that pipe there, and it blows out the air that gets exhausted uh, while this dust collector picks up 90 to 95% of the dust. The rest of it gets kind of scattered around that that area. You can see it, it becomes a maintenance issue. Um, it gets back into the fresh air intakes. We've had problems with with uh, sawdust getting into the kitchen, and it just kind of makes a mess back there. Uh, we've had dust flying into people's eyes as they walk into the as they walk into the back door there. So this this after filter will uh, take that air where that excess uh, sawdust is going go through a filtration system and then dump it out and we'll, co we'll collect most of the most of the sawdust that is um, that is that gets past the uh, the dust collector um, and this will catch nearly all of what what comes through um, this isn't the, exactly the unit that we're getting here but it's kind of a I, I didn't have a good picture of what what it was so um, that's cl that's somewhat what it will look like back uh, what it will be back there so the price for that unit is fourteen thousand one hundred ninety two dollars I, re I received only one bid from Synergic Energy and Engineering Corporation now they're the ones who provided us with the dust collector initially um, and we've been working with them for a few years and we knew where the price was going to be on this I did get interest from another bidder on the east side of the state but they did not give us a bid so I'd recommend purchasing this after filter from Synergistic for 14,192. There would also, there will also be some more costs. Probably, well, I know there will be a, a, some more. We're gonna put this together ourselves, but uh, there'll be some piping and stuff, some miscellaneous things. Any questions on that? That will come before us at the next board meeting, correct? Correct. Yeah. The second bid is a, is a Bobcat Toolcat. It's a model 5600. This is a versatile utility vehicle that will have many uses for us. Many schools, universities, um, um, uh, municipalities use this piece of equipment. 
The main purpose in the winter for, will be for snow removal. Um, this, one, this unit will be a lot more efficient for us to use than our skid steer that we currently use to remove snow uh, and uh, from the uh, sidewalks at all of our schools within the village proper here, not including Sand Lake and uh, Prairie View. Um, so, so this this uh, this will allow us to get to those schools much faster, and, um, and uh, again, we will be able to use this year round. Um, along with the toolcat, we will be purchasing a, with that a, a new snow blower, a broom, and a plow. Um, we'll relocate the existing skid steer mm -hmm. to the high school, and we'll be using that for snow removal there, replacing an old New Holland front mount mower that's on its last legs. Um, um, in addition to the uh, the snow equipment, this this unit has the ability to use most of the same attachments that can be used on a, on a skid steer. Uh, and you can see some examples there. Um, again, we only received one bid for this. Uh, Bobcat kind of has territories, and it's kind of a unique item. Um, I did, however, compare this price to what the village purchased one last year, compared it to them and, and found it to be uh, similar in price from what they purchased theirs. Admittedly, this is kind of a pricey unit, 51000 for the tool cat plus the attachments. Uh, but once we make the initial investment, we can replace it annually for $2,500. We'll have a new unit oh. every year for $2,500, which is really important for us in the wintertime to have that reliable unit to clean snow and, and, and ice from the sidewalks. We're also going to start um, putting some brine down prior to snowfalls, much as, a, the, as you, you can see that on the highways where they do that prior to snowfalls. We're going to get, get into that, and this will, will also will have a tank on that and, and a sprayer for that. So um, again, um, received only one bid, had two, uh, two interested bidders. Uh, the second bidder could not guarantee that they delivered when we wanted it, and the first one has one in stock. So, uh, so again, I, I would recommend purchase of this from Bobcat or the Cooley Region for fifty-one nine sixty-nine. Any, Any questions, questions on that? So, when you indicate every year that we'd have a new one, are you that we would trade it in every Absolute, year yep, for a new one, yep. and the cost would be twenty-five? Yep. yep. And I see it's coming out of your budget. Yes, so this you, is planned for. Okay. Both items were planned for within the budget. Yep. And so this will also be on the next agenda this will be next week's or the next for meeting. Approval. So if you've got any questions, let me know. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Good job. Okay, next item is school district report card. Good evening. Tonight I'm going to share information on the district and school report cards that were released publicly on September 16th. As you may remember from last year, this is what the overview of the report card looks like. Although the number in the top left-hand corner is important as district personnel, we know that the report card's there to help us learn about our students and learn about our opportunities for improvement, but also let us celebrate our successes. So to dig a little deeper, this first slide shows student achievement, and this is the typical area that I report to you on reading and math each year. And you will see, similar to the WKCE report that I gave Oh, I guess back in March, um, we are above the MVC and above the state average. Overall, our scores increased in this priority area in both reading and math, so our total score increased from last year. The second priority area on the school report card reports student growth and Districts and buildings are given an overall score 
for student growth. And you will see that in reading, excuse me, in reading, our score increased from last year. In math, overall, our score did decrease from last year. Even with the decrease, we are above the state and the MVC average. Then the third priority area is closing gaps, and that is looking at the traditional populations where there is an achievement gap, and we know that we want to close that gap because we believe all students can achieve at high levels. Overall, as a district, we have our score increased in, both, in all three areas, reading, math, and graduation rate. Um, we are below the MVC and the state in that, but I think we're making great strides in those areas because of the increased scores from last year. Then the on track or post-secondary readiness priority area looks at graduation rate, attendance, third grade reading, eighth grade math, and ACT, and Overall, we are, again, above the MVC and the state average. We did see a slight decrease in this overall score from last year. And when we looked closer, one area that caused the decrease was our attendance rate. So as an administrative team and at building, area, at building levels, they're also looking at what can we do related to attendance rate. So this is the overall score that is up in the left-hand corner. And this slide compares us to the other school, schools in the MVC. You will see that we had a slight decrease, a tenth of a point, as a district. But you will notice other districts did go up and go down. Overall, we are above the MVC average. And this, this last slide is just a snapshot of buildings. And you will see that we have four buildings that exceed expectations and two that are meets expectations. Evergreen and Sand Lake, their scores decreased slightly from last year. Um, Holman High School stayed exactly the same. Vikings score increased. And Holman Middle School's score increased for the third consecutive year. So great job at the middle school. So what are we doing with this data? Um, our administrative team, since this secure release, have been working together, both in August and September, looking at our scores and <coughs> discussing you know, where are our opportunities. Um, at the building level, teachers and other staff members have had their report cards shared at staff meetings, at the building level student PDSAs. Then also sharing with families um, this, this month, or I guess in October, this will be a topic on the Divisions newsletter. All, post, or all report cards are posted on building pages so that the community can view them at any time. And then other areas, it was also you know, reported in the local paper where we are at and our presentation this evening. And other resources I just put that are available for you if you want to check out more about the school report cards. There are lots of links on the DPI site related to school report cards that get down to every, you know, the exact formulas that they use to create and give schools and districts scores. So with our vision of it, educating every student to achieve global success, we know that the school report card data is important, but we also look at our other assessment data because that's more more in-time data where a lot of the school report card data is very lagging 
for example, you know, what's in the school report card, a majority of it was from the WKCE almost a year ago. So we use other measures to look at how, how can we help kids achieve success. Any questions? So questions. I'm curious um, how this information, other than next year, at the same time having you come and do a report for us, and buildings working toward um, improvements in these areas, so they're working toward that. But is this data then, you referenced other assessment data, is, does, is this utilized in any other way? I mean, is it part of any other data that we utilize as a district accumulatively, or is it just kind of standalone data that's used? It's really, I mean, we use it on top of everything because of the multiple ways that it's reported. Because if we think back to the traditional way, when I report at the WKCE, we only have where are our kids compared to the benchmark, where this lets us drill down a little further. For example, noticing that our math growth, that, you know, it's, you know, lower. You know, what can we do so we can start looking in, like our math PDSA what are some steps that we can take and then use our district assessments to see are our kids growing with the steps that we are taking. Any other questions? All right, thank you, Wendy. Thanks. <coughs> then moving on to staffing increase recommendations, high school math. Dr. Carlson. You have an issue paper. It uh, seems like we've done this a few times, come back since our original staffing, but you have an issue paper specifically to increase the, uh, a math position at the high school that is currently 0.75 FTE. This was, the, this was actually a new position this year that part of the staffing plan we added or increased. And as it turns out, uh, we had a late resignation um, I want to thank so many people, our, um, beginning with Mr. Bear and his staff and math department coming together to make sure we have taken care of the, er, the immediate needs. I believe we have a long-term substitute in there at this time, but um, I'm requesting, asking the board's con consideration to increase this to a 1.0 FTE position for multiple reasons. I think even since the scheduling, since the start of school, we've discovered that that there is a need, but also as we look to mid-year, most likely it would be at after term two or after the first semester, we um, and before then we'll be posting and going out recruiting for this position. Yeah, we we anticipate that um, there's going to be growth in enrollment in our math area, and so I um, I'm asking the board consideration to increase this. And uh, that would come to you on the consent agenda at the next board meeting. I know Mr. Bear is here. I'd be happy to respond to any questions you may have about this position at this time. So are there any questions? I think Dr. Carlson also mentioned legislation not too long ago <clears throat> increased the math um, expectation so is it our sophomores it's really the current sophomore class and so we would anticipate going into next year um, uh, that as they look at their third year in school for some of them that may not typically get a, set, a third credit they will now and so that's why I make the comment that we're fairly confident that there's only one way that this will go as far as enrollment in our math program and that would be up how many students per teacher? Do yeah. you have any idea? I don't, and I'm not sure <laughs> what our average is right now, Mr. Bear. Otherwise, we can certainly get that. All of the geometry classes right now have at least 28 and not kids in them. Jay, could you give him the microphone? Thank you. Is that? It's probably warming up. Just yell. All of the students is on up. Yeah. All of the geometry classes right now have at least 28, if not 32. Um, and then the Algebra 2s are real close to the same. I would guess our average right now in the uh, math courses is well above 
25. Okay. Algebra ones through pre-calc. Getting up there. All right. Do we have any AP stats that has 30 or 31 in it right now? Wow. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. our, our math numbers are very good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Tremendous help for us if we could increase that 0 0.75. Sounds like it's uh, time for it, so. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Bayer. Any other questions? All right. Then moving on to auditor's report. Mr. Miller. Thank you. Um, the audit report was presented at the last board meeting and is on the agenda tonight as a consent agenda item. The auditor noted one management letter issue as a result of the audit. This issue identified the balance in the official's account as a balance that should be included in the end of year balance sheet. This change was made at the auditor's request and is reflected in the ending uh, balance of the audit report. The letter recommended that procedures be in place to ensure that all balances are recorded in the future and such procedures have been put in place. Any questions? Are there any questions? They just like to dig, don't they? <laughs> you have to find something. I know. <laughs> okay, so it is on the consent agenda this evening for your um, consideration, so thank you. Which is the next item on um, our agenda, consent agenda items. We have a number of items, including board meeting minutes, personnel report, financial claims and accounts, budget status reports, the highway HD speed limit resolution, mm -hmm. Field placement agreements with St. Mary's University in Minnesota, police liaison contract, um, auditor's report, and the first reading of two policies, education for employment and student attendance. I would entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda um, as presented unless someone would like to pull an item off. I would approve. Um, I would so move. We have a motion. Is there a second? I second. Okay, motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor of approving the consent agenda as presented, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Then, board member reports and discussion. I'll call on board members and they can provide reports, uh, especially committee reports. We're interested in hearing about your committee work. Um, and I will start with Mrs. Jagosinski. Uh, I have nothing. I haven't had a committee meeting recently. Okay. Mrs. Mayor? Um, SALC Student Achievement and Learning Committee uh, met recently. Um, we're going over policies as we always do on an annual or well, more than annual basis. Every so many years we look at them. But secondly, we're also um, studying and looking at our purpose, which also includes looking at curricular areas. Two of the areas that the board has directed us to um, investigate and discuss and learn more about to bring to the board include class size, our policy and how it compares to other districts and um, finding research on that. And secondly, um, the issue of start dates has come up recently. So um, that the start date is not on our agenda. Start as time are you talking about? Time, okay. yes. yes, for different schools, thank you. Um, start times, I should say, not start dates. Um, but that will be something we will look at. And I'll keep you informed as to when that is in case anyone wants to visit about that. Secondly, um, there's a big issue happening in the county right now. Um, the Juvenile Justice Committee, which was formed many months ago to address several issues about our juvenile arrest rate in La Crosse County. And the alarming statistics, the data that has been gathered is that La Crosse County has higher than usual arrest rates, even higher than Milwaukee for a district of our size. That includes um, minority arrests, arrests, but it includes just juveniles in general. Today, a huge report was presented to us and I don't want to take up too much time tonight, but I want to alert the board that this is critical for Holman and the other outlying school districts around La Crosse. The original committee was open to all school districts, but La Crosse School District was the only one that had a rep on this committee. However, in January 2015, based upon the recommendations that this committee has brought forward, a new committee is going to be formed. They're especially interested in um, 
principals who deal with um, behavior issues. The big issue is how do we decriminalize these kids? Um, and, and the problem that they're finding is our county does create records for a higher percentage of juveniles than any other county in the state. S and it puts kids who need help into the criminal system just to get them help. So what they're trying to do is create other entities. And so I'm bringing that up because I want our administrators <laughs> alert to that, and I'd love our administrators to, to, to put a representative on this committee. Within the next month, um, my task as a member of that committee is to get names of people that would be interested, and also those of you that know people in other outlying districts, West Salem and GET and all the others, they're really wanting the schools to be represented on this. If we're not, we don't have a say in it as much. So I find that to be very critical. A um, lot of amazing national leaders are helping La Crosse County. It's, again, a rare opportunity for us to change how we deal with, um, with kids who are hurting. Are you basically saying these children are blacklisted for something minor and they have this on their record then kind of thing? Not necessarily blacklisted, Tom, but uh, we can talk. Maybe sometime I can present a report. But basically, um, there isn't a lot of coordination amongst all the agencies in the county. So not just schools, but even police and from city to city, et cetera. But what happens a lot of times is the only way there's the theory that if a child is arrested, at least they get in the system and they can get some help. And what the study is showing is that that's a very backward way of thinking, that many counties in the state of Wisconsin and across our nation are not doing that. They get the children the help they need without criminalizing them, because then it's on their record forever. So that's what I meant by that, and that's unfair to them. I've seen that happen where someone has been, it was just, circumstances that really uh, it was I thought it was unwarranted what happened right so they're trying to reinvent that yeah. box to to really make it um, a wonderful life-saving thing for kids that doesn't stigmatize them forever and that includes special special ed kids um, like um, from out of school places that like FCC they're all they're all going to be involved but the biggest stakeholders are the schools right now and so we need to have our voice heard on that I agree hundred percent that's interesting because that's not only the tactic that youth are even counselors will say that when you're working with a youth that if they step over that line that's what you have to do is call the police you Absolutely. don't have any other option but you know addicts in our community that's Absolutely, what they're doing as we well. We talked a lot about saying. them. We yeah. talked about whether they're adults or suspensions and and uh, <clears throat> children being suspended for snowballs and having a knife, and they're all in the same category. And that across the state and the nation, schools are beginning to look at that and really say, let's draw some lines here and let's let's fix this this first for our kids, but let's also talk about our policies. It's interesting. It's I remember years ago, you used to see this in, um, I don't know if it was the police blogs or what, but when, before we had a police liaison, so here's one of those issues, if a student would swear at a teacher, something like that, police were called to the school and disorderly conduct charges were leveled. And I don't know if that continues. I, you know, I see in their police liaison reports some of those kind of things. But right. For a while there, it seemed like that was a big tactic of ours to, they, to do that. And that so. is what they found, is that disorderly conduct is this huge barrel mm -hmm. that everything gets thrown into. Some of those calls are disorderly contact, and people are in danger. But the vast majority are, they broke a rule, <laughs> and it falls under. And how that disrupts the rest of the classroom Absolutely. for students. and so. Well, good. Thank you. But for there are good that. models in the state and the country that the county is looking at and getting help monetarily 
for um, as well as advisory for. So I think it's kind of an exciting time. They want to begin the enforcement of whatever new things this committee comes up with um, in the school year of 2015, 2016. So it's a timely thing that we want to jump on top of. It's interesting that lacrosse is so high. Is this uh, the police liaison? So that is how he's, is my, am I accurate to say he's proactive on this regard somewhat to try to filter out something like that where it's not a child isn't well I would think that maybe in the back of the mind of that student maybe I don't know I see Alex kind of sitting up maybe the fact that there is a liaison yeah. in the building I don't know if it's preventative but it could possibly stop a child from taking that step where sure. and I don't know uh, Alex? I think dr. Carlson said it last week um, officer Hickey is a, a presence in the school you know, not he not always in uniform, but you know, you know who he is, and he's there. He's in the hallway, and he's a very nice man. He really is, but he always has that. Sometimes, if a a kid, if there's criminal things or something, they'll bring him in when he's meeting with an, uh, you know, when the kid's meeting with an administrator. Sometimes, Officer Hickey's brought in, or we've had him come and talk to classes. You know, he's a he's a good resource, and he's, you know, I think it's very important that he's there. Now we have a good relationship with the police department. You know, I think if um, a kid knew of something illegal or wanted to report it, it's easier for him just to go to Hickey than it would be to march down to the village hall. I just wanted to add a note to that too, that knowing some of the students at the high school, um, you know, there's issues that are really sensitive. Um, you know, if you're in some kind of sexual harassment kinds of things for students amongst other students that would be definitely an issue that would be uncomfortable to go to a police department where you're talking to an unknown officer and I've just heard um, some young people say I can go talk to officer Hickey or they'll encourage their friends to talk with him because he is very easy to talk to and they already know him so yeah. thank you okay does that it for your comments okay then we'll move on to mr. Menninger um, just a quick comment the uh, buildings and grounds committee has not met recently but at our last meeting uh, we did ask uh, for an update on the uh, community center we have not heard anything on that in a while so we'll be looking to get uh, um, a recent update on uh, the status of that uh, at our next meeting hey, and that's thank all I have thank you um, Lisa Collins we had our finance committee meeting last Monday and um, more budget talk obviously anticipating that tonight um, also we're going to be reviewing some policies that we haven't looked at for a while we've got a six-year cycle and um, noticing that some of those are going to be coming due and um, the leadership team is going to be looking at some of those policies that are going to be coming due and kind of picking and choosing which ones maybe might be most appropriate to start reviewing um, on our committee and in part of that process we talked a little bit about maybe um, having more stakeholders because we kind of have a small group and sharing the wealth there and um, maybe, maybe having a more diverse um, spread of a community member uh, an employee those kinds of things so we'll be possibly looking at that I haven't sent a request to you yet Dr. Carlson but I will be doing that soon so just trying to broaden our our group a little bit more to have input into that area thank you mr. Dunlap I have nothing at this time hey mr. Cruz no, nothing. thank you thank you Alex oh well today I um, was very productive I did more research on weighted grades for advanced courses and made some phone calls to administrators around the, um, the conference and so that was very rewarding they're very enthusiastic people they are um, I had the opportunity to speak to several classes um, in our government area and invite kids to the meeting tonight, our annual meeting. Um, two showed up, so mm -hmm. two out of a hundred isn't bad. <laughs> right. Miss Berkeley and Miss Stinger, so Good job. thank you. <laughs> That's all I have. Okay, well, thank, thank you. Thank you for trying to do that. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Great. Well, thank you very much for that. I just have a, a few things. Um, there's a little bit of activity on the TIF district that we're looking at. I'm supposed to have a meeting tomorrow, but that's been delayed. Um, there's some concern um, 
basic you know on the county's part i think on some of the roads and maybe the residential part of it but we're moving forward and i will be talking with dr carlson and jay later this evening about um, how far do we want to dig as far as a school district and how much time do we want to spend looking at numbers that may or may not change you know our support of the tiff um, in to begin with so just having that conversation and moving forward I just wanted the board to be aware that there is some conversation out there in case you get approached mm -hmm. about it um, personnel and governance did meet and we um, did look at our policies that um, have either been before us or are coming before us because they are shoulds or musts I'm sorry must and we had a good presentation by Dr. Carlson and Melissa and Jay on those policies and really looking at what needs to be done with them is it a major undertaking a major rewrite or is it just housekeeping and so we discussed those sorts of things and then who was going to lead that would it be the administration they would basically do the work behind the scenes and bring that to us or would this be something we would do more as a committee um, as a as a whole and so we ferreted out some of those kind of things I think the administration has the bulk of them but there are a couple I mentioned the volunteer one and since a lot of those folks work with <coughs> volunteers um, we're going to be looking to the committee to really kind of focus on that and and have a good dialogue and discussion on that and but we have also other things that come before our committee and I bring this up because of um, some questions that have come about committee um, purposes and we also look as you remember the health insurance issues that we as a district have been talking about on an annual basis that's something that comes through our committee so it's not necessarily specific policy but it's an issue related to personnel and governance um, the other thing is the compensation model committee that comes to our committee and we work pretty closely with the um, ERT yeah the employee relations team um, committee and so sometimes we go back and forth um, between that committee and our committee on things that are not necessarily policies so there are some other natural things that will come um, before your committees and so we sometimes will make a specific referral to those as a board but uh, if they are directed let's say you as Lisa was talking about because you've got a group of people now that maybe they have issues they would like to see discussed then as a committee you know it'd be expected you discuss that and then talk about that at a board meeting so that if our board felt that's not a direction we really want that committee to be spending time on that would be something to be discussed as a board and if it's something that the board would like to have you spend time on then you would then you know it would be a formally referred but um, any of those kind of questions you have that's probably the the process we'd use for those sorts of things that may come from the bottom up it's not always the top down we like to see those things I would say the buildings and grounds the power line that's something that <coughs> you know really wasn't necessarily on our board's radar but because of some interests from that committee then it did come up through our board and I share that just because there is you know just some discussion um, just examples there's been some discussion uh, we find that our board that this personnel and governance having two HR professionals outside of the school district has really served us well having those other people <coughs> outside so just a, a few comments there on purposes of our committee since we have a little bit of time <laughs> so the last thing I wanted to comment on was the liaisons because I know I re reminded you that we have a WASB liaison, a CESA liaison, a technology committee liaison, a curriculum council liaison on the board, municipalities, and a co-curricular liaison. And you know, take a look at your assignments because if you aren't being contacted by the folks that run those committees you should reach out to them and let them know that you're ready to serve them and I know Dr. Carlson commutes, communicates with them as well but just let them know that you're ready to serve in that role and provide feedback some have taken a more active role as the board and some it's just a liaison where they serve as a ad hoc kind of committee member so that's all that I have um, I would note that um, school board committee reports you've received finance personnel governance student achievement and learning and buildings and grounds um, our meeting schedule the 23rd tomorrow evening is the WASB meeting in Viroqua 
I think Anita and I are going. Kate was going to try and can't, and I don't I know cannot. if anyone else. Okay. To pick up an award for me, though. Oh, well, I wasn't going to mention it until next time, but I know that <laughs> Kate is eligible for a level yeah. one um, <laughs> recognition for all of the th extra things that she's done outside of our board meetings. Um, I would note that the October 2nd outreach with CESA 4 has been canceled. Um, I hear there's a Packer game that night, but there oh. may have been other things going on, <laughs> that low nice. participation. We have board meetings coming up the 13th and the 27th of October as well. And then, um, just quickly, board policy administrative rule reviews. I'm most familiar with the administrative organizational plan. If you look at that um, item, very briefly, there's a, a foundational statement, but then in that is an organizational chart, basically, which we're thinking, does that really need to be in the policy or an administrative rule? Could that be someplace else and be referenced? in the policy but it's hard to keep it up to date and if we have it in a policy then every time you want to change you know as we change and it's out of date right now so that is the plan for personnel and governance unless somebody feels strongly um, any other way I'd look for feedback from you on those uh, on that the other two are class size and partnerships with businesses um, Kate any feedback on that or you're just looking for input on um, this past month was the initial conversation about class size and basically it's going to take a couple of meetings um, we need some input from people we haven't at this point asked who's going to bring us what information yet but it has been moved there was a, a motion a second a unanimous vote that yes we're going to move that over to next month along with policy and some other things so we'll just keep attacking it little by little and as always board members um, if you want to make sure that I have something in my mind as I go there to bring forward as a question let me know otherwise we'll continue on then we'll bring it to you and you can you can help with whatever we bring forward I'm not sure how long it's going to take it's a big issue and I know you and I discussed the possibility of an ad hoc committee are you still looking at that or yes did you? okay Yes. Then you could pull more people that aren't necessarily Absolutely. on your committee. I know you looked at, Kate had mentioned that she would look at the um, expertise of the building administrators and those folks, um, but is that enough and should we have you know, serve them serving on an ad hoc committee, that kind of thing. So good. I'm yeah, glad and I, I think the answer is probably yes. Mm -hmm. You know, we need everything that our district does and every district does we need to base on data we, we need to look at what data tells us we should be doing for our class sizes um, and yeah just compiling all that and getting it together we need all of our leaders who know a lot of that already um, and then we need community members also anything on the partnerships with businesses any major changes no any comments from board members on that policy it's what we try to do is if you see something you say no this looks like a good policy then they'll leave it alone and maybe just do some housekeeping but if you feel like there needs to be a change that's the purpose for bringing it before the board because we years ago had committee working in going in one direction and the majority of the board you just hate to have that then come to a board and the majority of the board vote it down after that committee has done all that work so we try to keep up to date if you see significant changes or shifts in policy or philosophy then bring those to the full board so that there can be discussion before we actually go to a vote so okay well that's the purpose of that then board meeting reflection any comments or then I guess at this time I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor of adjourning, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion passes. We will have the budget hearing in about 14 minutes, 13 minutes at 7 o'clock, beginning at 7 o'clock. So thank you. Thank you. <laughs>